Okay, hello everybody and thank you for joining us for this Sculpture Matter session. I personally am so excited about this activity. We've done many activities over the years, um, but this is one of the bravest, it's one of the most uh, exciting, and I hope that you're gonna really enjoy getting hands-on with this session as well. Just to introduce myself, my name's Tom. I'm a fine art graduate from NUA and now work as part of the student recruitment team at NUA. I'll shortly be handing over to, to Des, um, who's gonna be leading us in this workshop. Um, but I just want to give you a few housekeeping notices and, and other things before we get started. So I'm just reading off my phone for this bit, so bear with me for just a moment. So, um, okay, so during this strange and uncertain time, um, we're aware that many of your, you and your, your students will be feeling anxious, um, especially the students, about their futures, and we want to support you in the best way we can. Um, we want to keep you up to date with um, how anyway as a community is approaching COVID-19. Um, and so what we'll be doing is we'll be sharing uh, over the chat um, what preparations we've put in place for students that are going to be starting with us in September. So we're going to share with you a link that goes back to our website uh, that might be particularly useful for, for your students that you might want to pass on. Now, um, just a, a few other housekeeping notices. Um, we'd like it if you would keep your um, audio and your video off during this session. However, we would like to invite you um, from time to time to share with us what you've been up to. So if you are interested in showcasing your work um, to everybody, um, then please let us know over the chat function whether you'd be happy to share your work with us. Um, other than that, in the unlikely event that Des's internet drops out, what we'll do is we'll attempt to enter back into the session for about five minutes. Um, and should um, we not be able to do that for whatever reason, we will send you over a video of, um, of the rest of the session. Now, um, just to, to give you a little bit of an overview of Sculpture Matters as well, um, this session in particular is going to last about an hour, but Sculpture Matters um, was born about a year ago um, through a conversation that Des and I had in, in our office. Um, we were talking about um, 3D making and how 3D making is, we're seeing less of it in the classrooms that we, we visit, we're seeing a bit less of it um, I, I guess on the curriculum and for a number of reasons because um, in terms of access to things like kilns and other resources, it can be quite difficult. We also, um, we don't see much, well, as much maybe 3D work in portfolios as we have done in the past. So we, we really wanted to, to address that. So this is kind of our response. And we've um, taken Sculpture Matters, which is a series of workshops. We've taken it across the country. Uh, we've worked with places like the Yorkshire Sculpture Park along the way. And we're looking to show the, the value of 3D making, how that, um, that 3D making, starting off with sculpture, actually could be used as a diagnostic tool to help people realize their interest in interior design or architecture, or it might be that they're interested in fashion, but they, they come to that angle through, through sculpture. Or it might be that they're interested in things like product design, or it might even be that they're interested in animation, but sculpture is a great access point for all of these areas. So we're really keen to kind of highlight those to you today. And right, with that, I think I'm pretty much done here. I'm gonna hand over to Des and uh, myself and Liv might pop up a bit later. If you do have any questions over the chat, please let us know. But for now, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy this session and uh, over to you, Des. <laughs> Thanks ever so much, Tom. Um... It's going to be um, it's going to be hopefully a really enjoyable hour or so. Or, well, no more than an hour, everybody. But um, it's good to be working with you today. Um, yeah, I'm, my name's Desmond Brett. I'm a senior lecturer in fine art at Norwich University of the Arts, um, and I'm a bit of a sculpture nerd. So um, uh, th this this is hopefully will be um, as as useful and enjoyable for you as it is for me. Um, the main point of it is that um, we also want sculpture, the processes of sculpture to be accessible to you. Um, and none of, nothing that we're gonna to use today really, I would say are kind of particularly um, high-end materials or um, inaccessible materials. Um, if anything, one or two pieces you might be able to pick up from uh, an art shop or, um, uh, but, but generally speaking, it's fairly, fairly straightforward stuff. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping you've all got your boxes at the ready. Which you've been sent, and um, very exciting. And inside, you've got a few little goodies in there. Um, and it's uh, the first thing I'd like you to to pull out is is your um, 
your pipe cleaner, you'll, you'll notice you've got a few pieces of pipe cleaner in there. Um, now I can't see any, any of you at the moment, so I'm just going to have to paste this. So um, I don't want to kind of overdo this, but you should have three, two or three pieces of pipe cleaner in here. So if you dig those out, and do just let me know if, if, I'm, if I'm going too fast or ask me to sort of slow down, um, and I will. Um, I'm working from my, um, I like to call it a study, but it's actually just a room full of stuff. Um, so I've cleared a little space out of my table to, 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 to work on. But here you've got um, fairly mallable pipe cleaners, which I, 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 don't really, I don't really know how, um, you know, I don't know who, who smokes pipes anymore, but um, they're nice, they're nice objects. But they hopefully have a good memory. So you'll be able to manipulate these with, a, with, a, with, with ease. And what I'd like you to do is just get a feel for this stuff by maybe assembling them, forming them like this. And I'll, I'm just going to move my, my computer up so my camera can sort of face the table and just start to manipulate the, the wire and, and start forming something um, by joining them. So for starters, just assemble your three pieces of pipe cleaner together in a in some sort of fashion and i'd like you to make something that perhaps responds to something in your vicinity it might be the corner of a table or around your hand or wrapping it or um even just playing around and making a shape in itself and see about sort of weaving the, the wire in and out of itself perhaps tying it tying it off looping it and this this stuff's really nice for you know for underwiring structures. So it could be that you you know for example if you're working within a kind of fashion and textiles sort of side of things, um, it's lovely material to use. Um, so and again, if anybody wants to kind of come in on and let me know if if there's uh, any questions or any anything you'd like to ask as we're doing this, then by all means do. Um, so. I'm just kind of moving the kind of pipe clean and building a sort of drawing in space, I suppose, a kind of three dimensional drawing. All right. So now how will I know everyone out there, if, uh, how will I know how I'm doing and how you're doing? Um, it'd be really good to sort of see some of, the, some of the pieces you've made, actually. Is that possible, Tom? So something like this, just build a... Hi, Des. We're just going to... Um... Wait for people to um, yeah to, to just let us know they're interested, and then we'd love to have a little chat with you guys. Yeah, it'd be really good just to sort of see see how you're all getting on because I'm you know what I don't want to do is ru rush through this because um, you know in many ways um, for some of you this might be the first time you might have <laughs> worked with this sort of stuff before. Um, so something like that. I mean, I'm sort of imagine this as a kind of drawing in space or a um, a sort of structure that might relate to nature. Um, it could be. I don't know. At the moment, I'm thinking of a sort of sort of three-dimensional racetrack or a, some kind of fungal structure that you might find in a woodland or something. That's very pastoral, isn't it? But um, something. do have a look at the the screen and let us know if there's anyone um, that's on there that you'd like to have a little chat with about their. Well, yeah, I can only see I can see if some of you some of you got your screens off, but um, oh, that's looking good. Okay, right, great. Um, <laughs> shall I pick on somebody? I can see Fiona McKenna. You're you're looking very intently at something that's looking smashing. Yeah, nice. It's a nicely tight oh. form. Very nice. No, keep it kind of yeah. Oh, that's looking great. Yeah, really nice. <laughs> You've got a kind of geometric shape there as well. It's um, reminding me of a Richard Deacon. Oh, it's a peanut. Oh, you've got something to work from. Very good. Yeah, that's a nice idea. And Hannah Wilson, what are you making over there? That's looking. It's like I'm broadcasting to the country, but. Um, it's looking swell. Good. Well done, everybody. And you can make these as sort of compact or as expansive as you want. But um, in many ways, that's, you know, that, that's, that's enough of a sculpture as it is. Um, but there's going to be a twist to this. And we'll, we'll, we'll come to this later. So if you feel like you've, you've found yourself a kind of structure or a shape, then what I would like you to do is just to put it to one side. Okay, so just pop it on the table and um leave it leave it to one side and then we'll we'll move on to the next to the next phase okay is everyone okay with that so i'm just whizzing through having a quick look at some of you yeah okay you're all looking reasonably satisfied you've 
you've got so you're ready for the next the next stage good okay great um right the next the next bit is where it gets a bit kind of sticky and, and hopefully not too messy but um we're going to move on to to the business of casting plaster and in your boxes and your your wonderful boxes you've got you should have a bag of white powder um and uh fingers crossed that, that all went through the post office system without any uh i watch kind of i would like watching those programs like border security where they kind of have to pierce a hole in the bag and kind of taste it to make sure it's not something naughty but um this is the real deal this is the best the best in the business plaster of paris and um you'll you'll have it all in a, a sealed bag um so hopefully you've all um been instructed to have um prepared some water and some containers so so i'll just go through a quick checklist with you to make sure you've all got what you need so first things first you'll have your bag of plaster in your sainsbury's freezer bag and importantly it's got a little zip top to it a little kind of seal tight top which is going to be really critical for the next bit you should also have some sort of container for mixing it uh, i've got my ice cream tub very blue peter and on top of that i've got a, a, a coffee mug with 200 milliliters of water so there should be um 200 milliliters of water there should be about 400 um, grams of plaster in your bag and you should have a container um, if any of you need to measure your water by all means do I've got to, I've just borrowed the, the measuring jug but 200 millimeters of water should comfortably mix the entire bag of your plaster um, just as a measure um, whatever you have in, t in, in, in volume of plaster you need half the water to achieve a really good casting mix and if you've used plaster of paris before fantastic and if you haven't used it before i think what i would say to you is that it's it's a, a particularly useful material for turning uh voids into forms into things and um it's also extremely good for applying to a surface um like um you can apply it to uh Abric surfaces and it'll set really nice and hard. Um, you might have also, some of you might have cast body parts in it with it as well. Um, and it's really super for kind of pouring into volumes. Um, and today we're going to look at using plaster to make a, a, a very simple cast form, um, really just to kind of get the hang of using the material. Okay. Um, so the, the kind of, there are a certain amount of rules that you need to to abide by when it comes to working with plaster. Um, and I like to use, you might've heard this before, but I like to use the kind of dairy, there's a dairy products rule, okay? Um, and it's, it, it, I, I don't really watch enough of the Great British Bake Off, but I kind of think this is a kind of sculptural version of the Bake Off we're gonna do. Um, but you, when you're mixing plaster, you don't want it to be too runny and you don't want it to, to be too thick, which sort of stands to reason. Um, if it's too runny, it never it will never set so if it's milky it it's that means there's too much water which is why we've set kind of quite strict guidelines for this 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 process today um if it's too thick like kind of primula cheese from a tube um it will be it will set too quickly and there's not enough water so you kind of want it to be somewhere in the middle and i would say it, a bit like runny custard or the double cream that you pour on a christmas pudding um something that has got a kind of fluidity to it that you can pour but it's not too thick and gloopy that it, um, it just sticks to everything. Okay, so um, without further ado, hopefully you're all kind of psyched and ready for this. Um, some of you are looking a little bit kind of um, pensive, but it's gonna be okay. And if, if you ruin your um, mini utensils or, or it goes everywhere in your house, I apologize, but I think this should be okay. This should be fairly, fairly um, well, muck-free. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So. First things first, when you're mixing plaster, um, you need to always add plaster to the water, not water to the plaster. And if you can, if you've got to use something to mix it with, a spoon or a paddle is usually good. Or if you want to get your hands in there, by all means do. But always make, make sure you've got something nearby that you can wipe your hands with. Um, 
So depending on how you want to do it, if you want to plunge in with your hands or you want to use something to mix it, it's, it's your call. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my half a coffee mug, my 200 mils of water into, into the ice cream container. So if you can do the same, and voila. Okay. So um, another thing is you can always add plaster to this as you go, if you, and you can always add water to it as long as, you're, as long as it hasn't set too quickly. So 200 millilitres of water, okay? You're all all right with that? And then the next thing I'd like you to do is to slowly introduce and deposit your plaster into your container. Now, it's a useful thing to do to have on standby some extra water if you have. So if any of you need to dash off and get some, it might be useful just to have a mug or a container of water, just in case you might need to add a little bit more water to make your plaster a little bit more runny um, at this point. So just uh, if you need to whiz off. Oh no, you're all looking very prepared actually. Okay, okay. So if you can see, okay, um, here we go. So plaster, just, you don't need to throw it all in at once. And um, if you chuck it all in at once, it, it would just be very difficult to turn into a big lump. So just try and just empty it out as you go. And what you want to be looking for is um, a kind of island forming in the in your water. Uh, if anyone's ever been to Iceland, it's a bit like that. It's a bit like a kind of volcanic island coming out from the water. Um, so, so you just want to sprinkle your plaster, and it needs to just stick. It needs to stick out of the the surface of the water, and you'll see the plaster starting to soak up the water really easily. You don't even have to touch it. The temptation is to stick your hand in and start mixing. And I hope you can see that all right, but it's, um, it's just slowly sort of soaking the water in. Plaster takes a, a fair while to set. So you can almost go off and kind of, I don't know, have a cup of tea or something and come back. And it, and it should be fine. But the longer you leave it for, the less lumps you'll get. So in it goes. So. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water to mine. So what you want is a kind of island sticking out of the surface um, and it's drawing up the water really well. And with my trusty fork, I'm just going to start mixing it. Um, again, if you want to use your hands, use your hands, but um, you want to just start mixing it to, to, for, to, to, for the main part, to get rid of lumps and uh, any things that might kind of affect the casting process. You want plaster to be as lump free as possible. So I'm going to deposit the whole lot now. And at this stage you can then finish off your plaster and add a little bit more water if you need to. And just keep stirring. Now, how are you all doing over there? I'm just going to scan across. Is everyone okay? I'm hoping everyone's kind of uh, all right with that. Um, good. Okay. So for those of you who are new to this, you like I said, you want to have it almost like a, the consistency of double cream. Not too thick, not too runny. Another good rule of, of thumb or of finger is if you dip your finger in and it doesn't drip off your finger and you can't see your skin underneath the plaster layer, then it's a really good mixture. So it wants to be kind of creamy, if it's too milky, you'd see your skin underneath. So you don't want to be able to see your skin. It needs to not drop, drip off your, your finger easily, okay? So if you can do, all do your dip test, just try your dip test. You've got plenty of time for this, okay? Um, now at the moment, a lot of you frozen. So Tom, I, I can't see anyone working at the moment. So um, I'm sort of, I'm kind of flying blind, but I'm hoping you're all- There's getting... people are smashing it up. There's a few <laughs> demonstrations going on now. Very good. Okay, excellent. Yeah, excellent. yeah, we're seeing good progress. That's good. You'll you'll have to be my 
my eyes then, Tom, because uh, uh, for some reason uh, I can't quite. Lisa's got, see Lisa's, ever, Lisa's got a lovely mix going on. Finn's, <laughs> yeah, Finn's shown to the camera, looking great, excellent. Excellent, excellent. good work, everybody. Yeah. Okay, so you've got, you've all done your kind of dip test. Um, you should have a lovely kind of reservoir of creamy plaster, just like that. Okay, so Iceland's just sunk into the sea. You've mixed it all around. It shouldn't be like Primula cheese spread. It shouldn't be like milk. Um, and it could be good enough to just pour onto your uh, your, ca your cake or your, uh, or your Christmas pudding. It shouldn't be like Rodders and it shouldn't be like kind of, I don't know, set yogurt either. Definitely not like set yogurt. Okay, good. If you've all got to that point, I'd like you to just go back to your, grab your um, pipe cleaner sculpture, wherever it might be, and I'd like you to dip it into your vat of plaster. Take it out and just give it a little shake, like that. Give it a little shake. Drop it in again and give it a little shake. All right, is that all right, everybody? Can you, can you see that, hopefully? Everyone's cracking on with it, Des. <laughs> Excellent, Tom. Thank you. Very good. So look, you've got a couple of dips, two or three dips will do. The point is, if you get, if you take it out and sh sort of shake it a little bit, um, it will just start to kind of affect the plaster drying. And, you know, a bit like kind of, if you've been to, you know, if you watch people to put fish, fish into a, a chip fryer, a fish and chip fryer, a chippy, that's the kind of thing you're looking for. All right. Yeah, that's so um, that's what I'm after, okay? So I'm after something like that. Now just set that to one side. I'm just gonna put this down on here and just set it to one side. Um, now this is the, um, what I'd like to just have, a, if I can, yeah, I'm afraid a lot of you have kind of frozen, but anyway, yeah, okay, I can see you all now. Um, so just pop it to one side. It's good to see um, some of you are kind of prepared with gloves as well, which is good to see. Uh, Roe Mason. Ro, that's looking good. You're looking good. Yeah, actually, you've got, a, you've got some help as well. Very good. Oh, well done. Um, Annie Edwards, got some gloves on. Very good. Um, uh, I'm not kind of um, advocating any particular brand, but I, I, my, my hands do get a bit dry when I'm using plaster. So I do, I like to use the Body Shop Hemp Hand Cream, if anybody wants to use that. That's my recommendation. Um, excellent. Right. Now, uh, it won't hurt if you just sort of grab your your object again and just give it a little bit of a wave maybe just blow on it a little bit just to get it setting dip it in again one last time and then set it to one side okay just set it to one side here all right so that's what i want you to do and whilst that's sort of setting just give your plaster another quick stir just to kind of get, just to stop it from getting too sleepy. All right. Excellent. Well done, everybody. It's quite a kind of a, it's, it's also hopefully quite an enjoyable process as well, <laughs> if a little messy. Um, so you've got your vat of plaster, you've dipped your sculpture in, it's just setting over here. The next thing is, I'd like you to go grab your bag that the plaster came in. Okay, grab your bag. Okay, all got that, you've got your bag. And I simply want to, you to pour your plaster back into your bag, all right? So just pour it back in. Now you might need to hold both hands like around the bag and just simply pour it in. And if you need to get the hands in there, by all means do, just pour it all in. Okay. And once you've poured it in, you should have all your liquid safely contained within your bag. Pull the little zip lock tight thing on the top there, nice and tight. And just sit it down for a minute and clean your hands. Okay, which is what I'm going to do. Right, okay. 
see how you're all doing. Okay, show me your show me your bags, everybody. Let's see your bags. Safe and sound. Plaster in the bag. Good. Well done, everybody. Um, Ah, oh, Rachel Fraser, very professional, but I like, like what you've done there. You've done that before. Um, Jen, looking good, thank you. Genevieve, how are you getting on over there? <laughs> good, good. Yep, thank you everybody, great, great, great. Let's, let us know if you'd like to have a chat with anyone at any point as well, and uh, we will unmute um, as we go, okay? Oh, well that's a good idea, yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? Um, well, yeah, yeah, right, well, we'll get to the next point and then we'll have a quick, sort of maybe a quick conflab. Yeah, that would be really nice. So everybody, you, you should have your bag safely, um, safely containing your plaster. And all I want you to do now is to use it as a kind of, in, in, in effect, this is gonna be the thing that, that, because it's containing plaster, which is now activated, I'd like you to sort of place it somewhere or sit it on something, so you might want to, I don't know, you might want to kind of use an object and sort of sit it over it or slump it next to something and just allow it to take its own form. All right, so, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, for example, you might want to use the mug or a, a something ne nearby and just sit the actual object onto it. So it might be that you might want to kind of slump it over a, a thing or you might want to sit it inside something. Um, I might do that actually, I might just sort of sit it inside my mug. Right. Okay, so whatever you want to do, just you've got plenty of time to work with this. So um, however you want to manipulate it, you might want to, you might have a willing participant who might want to hold it for you. It might be interesting to kind of hold it in your hand. So whatever you do, the, the point is just to get used to casting, but also just to see what it can do, um, how it can take on form. Now this, this is what we call the, the, imp the impress, the impress of plaster, where it takes form, it impresses itself onto something. And uh, um, the wonderful thing about this, this process is you, you could use a bag, you could fill plaster in a, uh, a coffee sack or a piece of clothing, um, it's a really nice process to pour this into, um, you know, uh, for example, a student last year knotted the ends of an old cardigan and poured plaster into the sleeves and then left the kind of cardigan to kind of sit on something. And the beautiful thing about it was it kind of, uh, it took the form that it was slumping, but it also picked up all the kind of details of the, of the, the ribbing of the knitting of the cardigan. So anything really, anything that you can fill, plaster will happily go in there. So just pop it to one side um, and just leave it be, leave it be, okay? Um, yeah, I was kind of keen, to, uh, let's, let's pick on, let's pick on, Ro, with your assistant, uh, can, we, can we have a quick catch up with you? Um, how are you getting on? Um, just deciding how to balance it over this bar. Oh, that's looking swell, yeah, I really like the look of that. So, um, we have to... <laughs> two assistants. Two assistants. Um, yeah, you might want to kind of maybe um, maybe tape it or or um, yeah, it should, if it sits there, great. Um, unless you tape it to the kind of table and or one end of the table, or, or, or it, it yeah, should. Be kind of it's sort of slopping over the edge, but without it, I might have to tie not in the bag. I think. Yeah. And that's yeah, 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 yeah. Spreading too much. Um, have you worked with plaster before? Yes. Oh right. Okay. Yeah, so love yeah. it. I don't get to use it as much as I would like, I think, because I think when you have like really short lessons, um, yeah, okay. fair enough and stuff with a big class, you know? Yeah, well, well, the nice thing about this is for all of you who are kind of working, particularly into the secondary sector or whichever level you're working at, the nice thing about something like this is you could just leave it, they could, in terms of clear up, they could just leave that there. Mm. And you could, you, they could leave it to one side and then come back the next lesson and then unpeel it, which could be a really nice kind of return, return to the return fixture. So yeah, yeah really good, okay, great, thank you. <laughs> Who else is going? Kelly, Kelly Ward. I'm going to move over to you, Kelly. How are you getting on? <laughs> you look quite involved. Hi, Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello, Kelly. Um, how have you get? Well, what have you sat your um, your piece on then? Um, a little mug, a coffee cup mug. Yeah, nice. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, nice. Yeah. Um, and is it setting quite? It looks like it's setting quite well. Yeah, it's setting really well. It's quite warm in here. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, and that's another thing, everyone. If, you, if you're kind of working, if you need a bit more time with your plaster, um, use cold water. And if you want to sort of speed it up, use, use warm water. Um, and uh, if you really want to move things along, um, use a fan. <laughs> um, Genevieve Rudd, how are you getting on over there? Nice to see you. What's going on over there with you? 
Hello. Hi. Did that, did that work? Yes, <laughs> Technology. Did. Okay, so oh. talk to me. What, what's what have you been? Uh, what, what have you been cast? Oh, oh yes. It's a, it's a peg loom that never gets used for weaving. Right. It always gets used for something else. So drawing. Now it's being cast. So um, yeah, it has. It's got its use, but just not for weaving. It's a radical, <laughs> r radical use of some weaving structure. I like it. Um, <laughs> Actually, that, I've got to say, um, all of you who've shown me the kind of things they're on, th these look great as they are. So um, one, I think what would be really interesting is when you take off the plastic to, to relocate the plaster back onto the object. Um, I think it would be a really interesting sculptural kind of combination where you've got the thing that forms the object and then the object itself. I think that's a really interesting juxtaposition. So um, it, it looks great as it is, but um, I, I think, um, yes, uh, I think they'll be really useful to kind of Think about all, all of you. Think about that. But yeah, Genevieve, that's really. I like. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good just sitting on these prongs. Okay, good. Um, uh, Sarah Sanderson, um, you're you're wearing a boiler suit. You're kind of very. You're prepared for this. You're prepared for sculpture. Hi. Oh, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> yes, I'm prepared. Yeah, you're prepared. <laughs> um, I put mine over a um, a light, an old light bulb I found hang on the desk. Nice, that looks great. So sort of ensconced in this this uh, this kind of pillow of plaster, I love it. I love it. I don't think I'll get it out. Yeah, well, you know what? Maybe maybe it's just going to stay there. <laughs> um, well, I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't know. I think uh, you know. It depends if there's. It depends how far down it's gone. If it's kind of sunk too far in. Um, it might be difficult to remove, but then at the same time, there are ways and means to kind of take the plastic off. Maybe you might have to cut around the bulb and, and just remove the plastic and leave oh, it yeah. where it is. Um, yeah. Or introduce a little bit of um, heat or something just to kind of remove, to soften it. Okay, good. Well, it's good to see some boiler suits in action. Uh, not enough boiler suits worn in sculpture at the moment. So uh, uh, that, <laughs> <there's> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you're gonna start something. Yes, we've had a few questions over the chat. Um, yeah. We, we've one question says um, how what health and safety factors do you put into to place when it comes to doing this in the classroom with students? Yes, it's a really good question. Um, firstly, plasters are very it's a heavy dust, so um, that in, in many ways it doesn't stay airborne for a great deal of time. And the the, the longer you or the less you act you agitate it, the less you agitate it in its powder form, the less it will rise anyway. So um, health and safety wise, it's it's always important to Firstly, I work in a reasonably well ventilated space. So that'd be my first thing. Um, the bigger the space, the better, rather than sort of crowding around in a small confined area. So if you can work in a kind of a largest classroom, open the windows if possible. I appreciate that's not easy in winter. The second thing is, depending on how much you're going to be using it, it's, I would always say um, for any kind of sculpture activity like you when you're using dust, to make sure you've got a dust mask. Um, for this purpose, this is such a minimal amount of plaster today, um, it, it's, it's not necessary, but certainly if you're going to use it more consistently or use it with a lot of students, you can't guarantee that they won't necessarily be, you know, might be dropping a bit or they might be sort of, um, pouring in a bit overzealously. So just some cheap dust, dust masks from, from a hardware shop. You can buy boxes of sort of 20 for you know, a, a tenner or thereabouts. Um, so I, I would if I were you. And of course, the, maybe the, the, the sort of post-COVID lockdown, they should all have dust masks. They might have masks anyway. So anything that kind of covers the face would be useful. Um, but first and foremost, yeah, good, good amount of space, well ventilated space. Um, try not to work over the plaster as well. So work with the plaster in front of you. So if you're not, if, as long as you're not looking over it, look at, have it in front of you. And, uh, and if you can wear a mask, then even better. Cool, thank you. Um, we, we've had a, a message just to say that um, their, their plaster went off um, far too quick. Um, and and this, this is a confession of ours. In the packs, we sent out approximately between 400 and 450 ish grams so therefore if you had your exact 200 um, mils of water and um, depending on your environment that you're in as well that would have all made an impact on how fast your plaster was setting yeah and and um and you know one of, one of the things about doing this on which is quite it's quite exciting and kind of there's a bit an element of uh, jeopardy here um but actually um I, I don't. I don't want to kind of. Uh, you know. I don't. Want to sort of, I know some of you might be disappointed if it has gone off too quickly, but um, at least maybe that will help indicate what you might need to to, to do next. So if you're if you're going to use it again, um, uh, then just um, perhaps 
use uh, having that kind of extra bit of water at hand is good you can introduce a bit more water to kind of thin it out a bit whilst it's setting uh, what when you're mixing it it's in a really good it's a really good state you can add a bit of water to it just to kind of um thin it as you're working the problem with plaster is once it goes off it's gone off you can't save it so um if it is lumpy if it is thick in the bowl when you're mixing it just to have a little bit of extra water on standby that's fine um if it has gone off then then you know ne next time round, um just you might just need to kind of use that kind of dairy product method if it's a bit if it's a bit too thick and if it's a bit gloopy like primula cheese then just add a bit more water in it um if it's too thin like milk then you could either drain off some of the water that's in the mixture or add some plaster in if you've got a little bit of plaster left over i hope that kind of answers the question who's got a who's actually is it worth us sort of picking on somebody who's who has had some plaster go off quickly that might be useful um who who has um who's had that whose fate has um has been a lump of plaster going off too quickly i think rebecca might have been pointing to her rebecca andrews i'll ask if we can unmute yeah rebecca andrews is that you did that work yeah Hi, rebecca oh, Hi. I'm, rebecca i'm i'm devastated for you um uh, yeah. but you know i'm I'm here, I'm here for you okay um, <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. So you, you, it went. That's a really splendid looking egg. Okay. It's gone off. It just went off a bit too quickly, did it? Yeah, really fast. Like almost before I even put it on the this, chicken. This isn't going to help you, but sometimes uh, th th there's another kind of variable to this. When you buy bags of plaster, if any of you have ever bought plaster before, depending on when it was manufactured, um, there's usually always a date on it. And, and sometimes if it's too old or older, it can go off really quickly so yeah. it doesn't have to be, but, but it, it's um it's just a yeah there are a few little variables but um so it went off in the bag when you were mixing it was it getting a bit gloopy yeah i mean when i was trying to get it in i thought it was a bit thick like trying to get it in the bag and yeah. then um before i even got the chicken it just went solid so it's not even on here properly but you know it's all right <laughs> the bag didn't get to the chicken um yeah I'm, I'm sorry for, for you and i'm sorry for the chicken but um <laughs> If you, yeah, so, so that, that, that in that case, then just, um, it's surprising how much time one has when you're mixing. But if, if you are then, um, for, you know, in, in future, just um, if, you, if you fancy trying this again, um, just use, you know, try, if you, and it's warm today as well, it doesn't help, mm. um, certainly where I am. But if you use cold water, that will slow it, that'll, you know, and inhibit the setting. And yeah. um, start with a little bit of water, just to keep introducing it. And then, um, uh, and, and then you, you can sort of, then hopefully you can, sort of thin it out a bit if you, if you need to but uh yeah well i'm yeah okay i'm so well the, the next the next time it'll be amazing and you can show us what you've done but looking at your your pipe cleaner piece that's been pretty successful though isn't it has that dried is that is that hard now yeah look at that now that's looking very good now i, I hopefully everybody you should all have <laughs> a reasonably set um uh, pipe cleaner sculpture Let's let's have a look at them, everyone. Yeah. Ah. Can you? That's looking great. Anna Church, yours is looking great too. And thank you. Well, that's great. Well, okay, looking good. Um, Rebecca, mm, yeah, looking good. Uh, who else have we got? Let's move along a bit. I'm going to go out further along. Annie Edwards, let's hear it from you, Annie. How have you how have you got on? Let's unmute Annie. I want to see what she's done. Oh, there we go. Hello, Annie. Hi. Well, that's looking. That's looking. Now, I'm. I'm going to take a pump. Was that some sort of shell form that you you've made? Um. Well, I kind of was a little bit inspired by my walk just before I came onto the yes, okay. uh, meeting. Actually, I went for a walk around the park, and yes, they had yeah. all like the um, they're almost like giant chive sheet uh, seed type things. You know, like the giant chive flowers. Yes. So I was thinking about them and kind of went for that sort of shape. Uh, it set really well. That's uh, really well, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Um, and it, it's it's sort of the great thing about the pumpkin; it sort of soaks up the plaster. Well done, good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, everybody. Right, let's. Um, Tom, we're going to move on. Um, we've got. Uh, it, I'm very conscious of the time. So well done, everyone. So you've got your cast piece. You've got your pipe cleaner work. It's now on to the next the next stage. Now all of you should have an object with you. Um, uh, and so I wanted to sort of move move some some of your stuff to one side. And what you need for this uh, this next phase 
is your object of choice, which you've got, and uh, I don't know what you've uh, you've got lined up. I've got to, I've nicked my three year old's um, school bus, so don't tell him, all right, that I've got it, but it's going to become formed into a sculpture. Um, if you go into your um, if you go into your box, you should also have a roll of cling film. So this is the point where I want you to get your cling film out, and. The cling for this is sort of cheap household sandwich stuff and very, very straightforward. Um, what I want you to do is to wrap your object, simple as that. And I'd like you to deploy your cling film by wrapping it in different directions around the thing that you're, you're wrapping. So with this, I'm simply wrapping my object until it's entirely ensconced. So, just have a few minutes to start wrapping and if you can pull it pull it tight as tight as you can as you're going so wrap it like so What, what I want you to do is entirely cover it. And as you go, keep pulling the cling film tightly. So maneuver it round, pull it as tight as you can. And just keep going. Now, the point I'm making is if you can, if you can move it in different directions, oops, it will start to kind of become translucent and then start to kind of almost take on the appearance of, of I don't know, like a boiled sweet or something. Um, so just go, keep going with it as much as you can. Wrap it and wrap it and wrap it. Almost until what's underneath starts to disappear. And as you pull it, really kind of pull it as tight, taut as you can like that. So that you're... So there's no, there's no loose baggy cling film, but it's all entirely kind of taut. Well done everybody. Some serious wrapping going on there, good to see. And I'm going to, I can see I'm probably gonna deploy the entire roll of cling film here, but. Yes, for those that have got larger objects, is it okay if they just cover part of it? Yes, that's a good point, Tom. If some of you've got something on, on the large side, yeah, if you want to cover it, cover a piece of it, um, that's okay. Because um, we're going to be using this as a kind of former. Um, so yeah, take a corner of something or a edge of a table or a top of a table or a stool or something, but um, you know, it doesn't need to be too, too extensive, but yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. Um, the, the other kind of element to this, everybody, is that the, the cling film is kind of taking on a different kind of geometry. So it's, whatever is underneath that, is starting to get lost in this kind of continual wrapping. Um, like it's being cocooned and um, as if it's being kind of ensconced in something. And, and those kind of verbs are really sculptural and, and I, I like those kind of notions of ensconcing, wrapping, entombing ceiling um so that's the kind of thing i'm after so go once round a few more times good now hopefully you're all kind of uh getting into this it's a good workout everyone as well it's a kind of you don't need joe wicks for this um it's a good kind of forearm workout shoulders and the more you pull it around the more of a, an aerobic workout okay. right so let's do it for another say another couple of minutes um uh, and just keep wrapping keep just wrapping your objects um but what i'm looking for is something something nicely tightly wrapped just like this and it's, it's a really useful, actually a really useful opportunity to um, maybe take a picture of it, take a few shots of this. Um, okay. 
Yeah, Genevieve, you've got, a t you've got a stool there. You could wrap the whole thing, actually, that might be, if you wanted to, maybe just cast a piece of it. But if you want, if you want to leave it at that, that's, that's okay, yeah? Um, what else have we got then? Who else has got what? Annie Edwards, what have you got? What is that, a clock? Mystery objects. But they've become mysterious, don't they? These all start to become, they take on another kind of form. Um, but what I like about this is it, it starts to kind of, um, it starts to change its, its shape form something slightly mysterious. And this is going to become your former, all right? So if any of you are kind of completed or you're approaching the end of this, um, to be prepared for the next stage, you'll need your roll of mod rock from your box and a pair of scissors. And if you have any water left over or a little container still of water, then grab that. How's everyone getting on? Let's have a look. Let's scroll along and see who's doing what. Um, Sabrina, what's going on over there? This is looking intriguing. What have you wrapped, Sabrina? <laughs> Let's unmute you. Hello, Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yes. Hi. Hi. It's, um, it's a pressure sprayer. <laughs> so I kind of was attracted to it because of the handle, but now that's that's not visible at all. But I still, you know, it's it's still looking good. Yes. Um, okay. So you've kind I'm of... I'm liking, yeah, I'm liking sort of the, I like, you know, what you've been talking about in terms of things being entombed and, you know, the sort of, uh, they've been becoming a bit mysterious. That's something I'm quite enjoying about this. Yes, um, well, good because I mean I, I find it kind of I, I find it fascinating how such ordinary materials or ordinary mm -hmm. things can get transformed, and mm -hmm. and then the, the sort of promise of something uh, that that might not necessarily be what you think it is. You know, if, yeah. you are, if someone else is looking at your, if someone you know someone else, some other audience could see these objects, it would be perhaps difficult to discern what they are. And yeah. Particularly when we go on to the next phase, which is using the, the mod rock, you're going to make another piece from this, which will then be yeah. another kind of another layer of distance from the original object. Right. So, uh, yeah, good. Good um, okay. Uh, some very intense uh, things happening. Michelle Brown. Hi Michelle. Uh, Michelle, it's on me. What have you uh, what have you wrapped? Um a bubble machine. A what? My daughter's bubble machine. Bubble machine? Yeah. Oh, so, so I, I would never, I would never know. Um, so you, is it all entirely, can it, it's entirely wrapped up now, is it? Yeah. Good. Fantastic. Yeah. Right. Well, this bubble machine will never be the same again. <laughs> okay, everybody. So you've got your object. Um, what I'd like you to do is get your mod rock out of the packet and just start. If you, I'm, I'm sort of figuring some of you might already be quite familiar with this stuff. Um, but just snip it out of the packet. And again, another health and safety kind of measure here with Modrock. It is a little bit dusty, like plaster Paris is. So that's why I recommend you cut it with scissors rather than ripping it, so that it kind of keeps the dust down. But just start cutting into reasonably large sized pieces of strips. Pieces of, pieces of strips? Strips, right? Cut them into strips. Um, and don't use brand new dressmaker scissors that I'm using. Um, use really crappy old ones but just pretend this never happened, okay? You never saw this. Um, all right, so you get the gist. So just deploy the entire roll of mod rock and, and then this is where the fun starts. Now, I would never wish anyone to have had any um, five-a-side football injuries, but if you've ever busted an, an, an ankle or an arm, then this is the stuff, isn't it? This is the stuff that gets wrapped around your uh, limb. Um, so with mod rock, again, apologies if this stuff you, you already know, but it's really, it's worth kind of reminding you, um, always bring the plaster to the water and simply dip it in. And this is where the magic starts, everybody. It just starts to activate, take it out, give it a shake. And what I'd like you to do is to start wrapping your object. Ah, now this is the bit where I, I knew I was gonna do this, I was gonna forget something. And I've almost, I almost did. Before you start there, everybody, grab a pen or something, or you don't need a pen necessarily, but I'm going to mark a center line all the way down my object. 
or if it's a particularly complicated thing, maybe more than one, but I'm gonna mark a center line like that. So mark a center line down your thing. You don't have to mark it, just, just try and work to a center point, center line, where you can then take the whole thing apart um, if, if you need to, if it's entirely wrapped. So if it's something that you're going to entirely wrap with mod rock, just some kind of marker of a center, okay? Or if you haven't got a pen at hand, just imagine there's a center line and just try and try and meet your mod rock and leave a little gap in the middle, okay? It came to me just before we started. I knew I'd forget that. Um, so once you've got your mod rock activated, I was I was trying to start with at least two layers of modoc around the whole thing if you can those of you with big objects just do a part of this just sort of start to kind of seal it around something um uh, you know uh, like genevieve with your stool maybe the a sort of an interesting sort of edge of it or the side of a part of it um those of you the bubble machine i reckon the whole thing could get cast um but look what i'm doing if you can can you see that all right i've got my middle line i've got my mod rock and i'm going up to the middle line but not over it so my two my two pieces of mod rock are just coming up to the middle of the line. All right, okay, everybody. So just work to this and just smooth it down and repeat. And like I said, at least two layers of mod rock if you can. Just see how much you can use in this, with it with, with a roll. I mean, a, a roll of mod rock will usually get enable you to cast something like a head um, if you're working that that way. That's a, that's a Hi, Des. Hi, Tom. We've just had a really good point from Heidi on the chat. Uh, she says, just a note, in class, I don't let kids wrap it around, uh, around their hands and arms, etc., as it constricts and it dries and gets warm on activation. Some kids in other schools had burns um, or uh, did, uh, did chest and, uh, and, and it, it caused respiration issues. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. Should yes, I, I think that's a really good point, actually, Heidi. Um, I, I would be very, very conscious of any body casting um, uh, where, where the mod rock touches the skin. Um, if you aren't going to do any casting with, with body parts, um, I would always use a barrier. And what I mean by that is cling film would be really good, or even a, a kind of layer of moisturizing cream to mitigate against burns. What you should never do is put it directly on the skin. That's, that's why it's causing burns, because the kind of exothermic reaction in the plaster is it will, it will instigate heat. So yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, but then you could look at someone like George C. Gall's work, the American sculptor, the great American sculptor, and he would often cast people wrap model around their cl clothed bodies. So you know, it, it, you know, you can do a lot with, for example, um, I did a, I did a, 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 a an entire body cast with a third year student, maybe two years ago now, and she it was her her torso, and she wore a kind of technical layer like a sort of um, uh, like a running layer, like a, one of those kind of wicking layers. And that actually enabled the mod rock firstly to come off really quickly, but it didn't affect, it didn't touch the skin. So absolutely, yeah, never use it directly on the skin. And certainly um, plaster of Paris is the lesser of the evils. Um, certainly never use anything like builder's plaster or thistle finish or anything like this, um, which, which has a much higher exothermic rating. So um, yeah, barriers, barrier cream. You can buy barrier cream, moisturizing cream, um, or cling film, anything that provides a barrier against the mod rock is, is always advisable because certainly with any plaster, any dry product as well, um, it, can, it can dry the skin and, and cause kind of skin cracking. So um, be, be mindful of that. We're very careful at you. Know, we, 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 always, um, we always say to students, if, if they are doing body casting, we always do it with a member of staff and another student so that we have at least two other people on hand, two people working with them. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Well, it wasn't really a question. It was a good observation, Heidi. Um, but but just on the back of that, yeah, certainly you always make sure there's a some sort of barrier between the, the plaster and the skin. There's, I, I think time has been flying by. Just to let you know, uh, you, there's about five minutes left uh, until the end of the hour. I anticipate that we might go a little bit over. So I apologise if, if anyone's on a, a bit of a, a tight schedule. Um, but we will have this as a recording. So if anyone, if we, if, and I anticipate that we will go over, but if anyone uh, needs to, wants to watch um, the end of the video, then please get in touch with us and we can send over a recording should you need to slip off a little bit earlier. Okay. Um, some very intent plastering going on, which is good to see. Um, Sharon, Sharon Adams, you're looking, what's going on over there then, Sharon? What are you wrapping? Looks like a kind of piece of furniture. Hi, Sharon. I 
I think me and Liv might be wrestling to unmute. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> What, what I would say to everyone is actually let's let's call it now. Let's let's sort of you can you can always come back to this mod rocking. So don't feel you have to finish it. What I think would be really nice to <laughs> wrap things up on. Sorry, my my laptop's getting plaster and water on, and so I'm trying to do it with wet hands and we yes, can't okay, move the, the thing. But I'm I'm wrapping it. Um, it's a chair. Oh wow! And, um, it's, I really like the way the the, the cling film looked and um, I think it would make a really nice drawing I think it'd be a lovely thing to draw really really nice and do it in charcoal and things like that but and oh, um, what I've liked when I put the plaster on is that um, it's it's going into the folds of, there's yes. like little folds here it's hard to it's hard to see really but where the cling film folds it's following the curve of um, the folds here so it's it's so, yeah. not just a flat no. I'm kind of contouring the, the mud rock around the folds. <laughs> so you're finding the cling, because all of you hope you're finding the cling film kind of takes on a new form, doesn't it? It takes whatever the object is you're wrapping, yeah. it takes yeah. on a different kind of form. Um, yeah. What I would suggest everyone, if you just sort of down tools for the time being, and maybe if you can after, you know, after we finish, just to sort of complete this. But um, let's just have a kind of pause. Does that sound all right, Tom? Have we got a few more minutes? Well, I've got, I make it um, three minutes to go. Yeah, yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, look, everyone, so let's just kind of, yeah, or if you want to carry on working, I'm happy just to kind of um, uh, just chat a little bit about what you've been doing. Um, the great thing about mod, firstly, with this, these, this object that you're making, you can always come back to this. And if you, if you want to kind of add more mod rock or buy some more mod rock and complete this, I would, I'd really like you to do that. Um, you can always add mod rock to mod rock. You can always stick plaster to plaster. But what I would suggest is if you if this piece goes dry, then just spray it with something, wet it before you apply any more mod rock to it, so that it draws the it draws the moisture in. So um, if you're going to continue that, do, do so. Just just a light spray with a bit of water or something would do. The intent for this is that um, you can once it's set, you can take it apart. You can take it off the the former that you've made in cling film, and then reassemble it with some more mod rock so you could stick it back together again so it so it's again it's a, it's a starting point really we're giving you just a starter here but but it would be really interesting to you know um once these come apart to reassemble it and then you'll have a, a secondary sculptural form that's been made by the initial former so the cling film over the object is one form and then by by extension the kind of the shell that you've made the kind of husk that you've made in mod rock becomes another sculpture in its own right which of course you can paint or you could leave it as it is as this really kind of nice beautiful kind of uh, uh mineral kind of form um so that's your kind of mod rock piece Le leave i mean mine's drying already so some of you might be noticing it's can you is it for somebody is it drying off already yeah so some of you are kind of finding it's kind of going a little bit bit harder um so set that to one side um and you don't need to take these out yet but um if any of you have got your your cast plastic bag sculptural form um i would say leave that for as long as you can maybe for at least another hour um if you wanted to let it really set but if it's absolutely if it's absolutely impossible to, to keep your hands off it then then gently unwrap it and um and just unpeel it uh so mine's kind of set already and if you if you find it starts it sets into the creases of your um bag right there just gently cut it with a knife or a pair of scissors um and you can undo it so i'm just going to unseal mine so for those of you who um you know who might be familiar with the work. Tom, this is probably the point where we could um, summon up Rachel Whitery. Could we? Could we bring her up? Ah, just like that. Brilliant. Um, so um, this is an example of. Um, you might already be very familiar with Rachel Whitery's work, but um, and she's a she's a really good point of entry for for, for students because um, as an example of of how you can modify an object by simply pouring something into it. This this is called Torso, Untitled Torso. And it's from 19, well, she started making them in 1989, 91. And it's a really good example of something that's just, is taking on that bodily form 
uh, by pouring plaster or in, in the, left, the case of the left hand one wax into a, a, a hot water bottle. Um, and it's, it's a beautifully simple structure, but I even love the way that the, the neck of the bottle is, is a kind of bodily neck as well. But that little pinch on the side is suggestive of, of a torso. Um, thank you, Tom, that's great. So if any of you have um, managed to take your bag out, um, you should have a, uh, a cast void that's been turned into something solid, which has, of course, very kind of architectural qualities. Um, so the, 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 I suppose the, the point of departure for this might be that you pour it into a more, it could be packaging or it could be, you might build something like a, a cardboard box or a, use some plastic packaging at home to, to build something that you can then pour plaster into. Um, so that's, that's that. Um, and you also hopefully got your, I actually did one earlier. I got a bit carried away and I, I've done a much larger version of that. So, which, um, you know, you, you could sort of think of that as a, I'm thinking like set design. Imagine having something sort of as a piece of set design or a piece of radical architecture or something like this. So there, or a piece of public sculpture, sort of sitting, sitting in a, in a monumental sculpture maybe. Um, for those of, just a quick pointer, in your boxes, you've got your little figures. So you might want to think about documenting your kind of figures next to, your pieces as well, next to or having it standing on your your sculpture for a sense of scale, um, which might kind of suggest something more architectural. Um, I like to think of these. These could almost be kind of some kind of body adornment or a some sort of structure that that's worn even. Oh, what do you think? Okay, I'm getting carried away there, Tom. So look, um, we have a question for there, aren't we? Uh, she said, "How how do I get the uh, cling film and the the plaster off my object?" as it's in my chair uh, and, sorry, as in my chair and the mud rock, sorry. Yes, okay, so if, you, if you've got your, there's two ways to do this. If it's on your chair, um, if, you've, if you've managed to kind of do it in two halves or it's in pieces, you just need to sort of slowly ease, ease the kind of, the, let it dry first, but just slowly ease it apart. Um, the next thing, you need, the, the, other, the other way to do this, and, and it, we probably haven't got time to do it now, but I would recommend you have um, something like a, um, a, a, how, a, a dining knife, you know, not, not a sharp knife, a, di a sort of dining room knife, and just slip it, just start to slip it under your mod rock and just sort of start to just carve away a little bit and just you'll start to kind of get to the, excavate it and you'll get to the, the, the cling film and do the same with the cling film and just lift, lift, it, lift the first bit up. So you're lifting the cling film up and just run it along to avoid cutting into the thing that you've actually wrapped it around. Um, but I, I would, you know, firstly, if you can, if you can separate it out um, just by prizing it apart with your two halves, just like this, then you can like that. And then if you can do that, then just un unravel your cling film to reverse the process. Does that, does that, does that make sense? It does, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, good, good. Um, the, the anecdotal bit of this is my, my, uh, my, my girlfriend got cast by Anthony Gormley about 12 years ago. And uh, there's only four women who were cast by Gormley because he's obsessed with himself. But he, um, sh she, had, sh she had to spend like 10 hours wrapped in cling film, wrapped in mod rock. And he had to cut her up, cut her out of the kind of form. He didn't make the divisions, um, so it took, it took longer to cut her out than to wrap her up. I, I probably nothing, but it was just uh, just made me think of it. <laughs> yes, um, we have well, obviously we've gone a touch over time now. Now, in theory, we had the bread lined up, didn't we, um, for, for this session? However, yeah. it might be worth us moving that into Let's that for next time. Yeah. Gulcha matters more. Um, so, which leads us on to if um, I hope you've really enjoyed that. Like, I hope that it's been quite playful. I hope that it's got your imagination kind of going, uh, and I and I hope that uh, you'll be able to take some of these uh, hints and tips and apply them in your lessons as well. Um, we do have a, a second kind of follow up session to this, uh, which I mentioned, which is sculpture matters more. Uh, you'll have received an email about it, and we're going to be um, sending. Um, out packs to people who haven't already well the materials you've got in your packs cover that session 
but also if you've got any colleagues that are, might be quite interested in, in joining in, then you can um, get them to, to book on as well and we can send them out some additional materials. Now the next session is less messy. Um, it's a lot is a lot drier um, so there's there's less of kind of a mess that, that's involved um, but we'd love to for you to join us for that session and we'd love to also share with you some of the things that you've you've been making as well so if you're, you're able to, to photograph what you've been producing and share them with us over our Instagram channel as well as over student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk we'd love to, to kind of catalog these and, and showcase them and uh, maybe have a, a mini critique, who knows, in the, in the next session as well. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to add, Des? Yeah, I, I just think, I, I would just like to say everybody, well done, firstly, well done, because the, you know, the, these are kind of, in some ways, the, these are um, fairly straightforward processes, but I want you to think about how it might be extended out to your own particular subject interests or the kind of flexibility of this. You know, we're dealing with, with sort of turning solid into sort of liquid into solid, void into mass um, we're looking at kind of parts we're looking at wrapping and changing the kind of geometry of something and looking at kind of fixing something as a line in space so these uh, hopefully these kind of these implications could be taken into your own teaching or how you you use this because just because we're using a kind of a, a you know a small kind of piece of um, pipe cleaner it's nothing to stop you from using a big piece of rope or a piece of fabric or something like this so I guess Tom really just my kind of parting shot to you all is to um, maybe you start thinking about how you might expand out of this and use these in other ways these kind of processes and that, um, that's, that's a great a great point as well because we're, we're looking at developing worksheets um, that, that tie in with these activities so that's something that we'll be looking to roll out um, just uh, well, around early July and uh, so we'll be looking to run out activity sheets that have a relationship to the time that you've been doing now and some that are a little bit more simplistic as well and seeing how they have connections with those other subject areas um, and yeah other than that Des was, was there anything else you wanted uh, to if, if, oh, it'd be great to see some yeah if, as Tom said if you if you could take some photographs of your results um, your outcomes some of the processes of making um, the stages in which you've done it use your little figures for scale um, hang some of your pieces up somewhere lodge them in an interesting location um, take these kind of alien objects into other kind of contexts and, and just play around with them. It'd be brilliant to see what you've done with them between, between here and when we see you again. I'd love to see what you do, how you interpret them. Yeah, and just to mention that again, that's, um, you can share with us at, at uh, NUA Outreach or hashtag NUA Outreach as well. Okay. Depending on the, the platform that you like to use. Okay. Right. Well done, everybody. everybody. I hope you've had a lot of fun. We'll be here for another couple of minutes if you do have any questions. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for joining in and uh, we hope to catch up with you again soon. There's do uh, keep an eye out on the chat uh, just to see if there's any questions that pop this up. The, this, Tom, this is the bit when newsreaders shuffle their paper, isn't it? They yeah, this is, this they is pretend, that bit. They pretend they're doing something. We need some closing credit music, something like that. Yeah. Oh, Rachel Jane, that was good. Do you see what that was? Do you see that, Tom? There's a balloon that was wrapped. Oh, I, I, I that, looked that, good. that looked good. Thanks, Rebecca. I've really enjoyed watching the videos. Yeah, it, it's hard. it's been a bit tricky. Oh, hello, who's that? Who's that? Who's got that piece up? That's interesting. Who's I can't see the name. Not Rachel Hamblin. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Yeah. What is that? What is that? An iron? Is that an iron? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> an alien iron. I love it. Uh, what's James Elliott been making? Uh, and Linda Tucker. What's going on there, Linda? What have you made? Is that some strange kind of... Uh, Oh, that looks like a kettle, no? <laughs> <laughs> so again, all these all, all these objects just need to be just gently kind of prized out of their out off the off the kind of formers, but they're really exciting, aren't they? So we we've had a question. Are we running the same workshop again on the second? Desmond, could you answer that question? Yeah, it's not the same. We're not going to do the same thing. We're going to do something different next time. It's going to be um, as Tom said, cleaner. But we're going to be looking at um, turning two dimensions into three dimensions, and we're going to be harnessing the power of of nature as well so we're not going to be using master it'll be a, a clean clean session 
I'm just interrupting, sorry, Liv here. Um, Becky has just sent a message saying sculpture isn't um, her strong point and she has some health and safety questions. So I'm just going to ask Becky to unmute um, so she can ask those to you directly. Hi, thank you. Hi, um, yeah, just a couple of questions. It's definitely not an area that I'm overly comfortable in, but I definitely want to do more of. Okay, great. Um, okay. I've read all the horror stories about mixing up plaster with children yeah. and yeah. with burns and all sorts of things. So if we were to give our students a small pack of plaster and some water, is it safe to let them mix it or should that be something that we avoid? Or, I'm not sure about this. <laughs> okay. I, okay, I would wholeheartedly say it's very safe for them to use. Um, uh, plaster of Paris has got a very low exothermic rating so um, uh, it will it will generate heat but it's it's also to do the quantity of plaster you're using if you're using kind of this much it'll generate a nominal amount of warmth if you're if it's a big vat of it then it'll it'll jump gen, uh, generate heat um, so the horror stories uh, yeah I mean that the horror stories are you know students being kind of encased in plaster and getting third degree burns because they've been covered you know covered in volumes of plaster so on on a, on, a, on the level that we're working um it will be minimal minimal it'll be warm rather than hot um i've never ever in my experience in 20 years of teaching had a student have burns from plaster um and that's very much down to making sure firstly that they're they're, they're supervised um and they know how to work with it safely but and also not to um you know if a student is i would never recommend a student plunges their hand in and leaves it in there because it'll be hard to get it out as well so if you're working with wrapping mod rock or other methods of wrapping plaster around a, around a, a skin um always always use a barrier just some kind of barrier method like um a, 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 um or some sort of barrier cream or like i said cling film or a technical layer you know just to get started with it and um, uh, a couple of layers of latex gloves are always, always good as well um if you want to get, or, or, or even some sort of thin fabric anything that kind of is forms a barrier between the skin but yeah I, mean, I know there are plenty of horror stories I mean I, um, <laughs> that, the problem with this is that it's hard to, hard to sort of separate the kind of what you hear because I, I know I know I know that I mean, a case of, of a student being covered in um, thistle finish the, the plaster powder the plaster that you use for walls in a house and that's got a very high exothermic rating so it gets very hot and, and very dangerously hot so um, I would say it's really safe to use um, make sure they're supervised. I know, I know you will, but um, that they're not just plunging their kind of something in, not because of the heat, but because it'll be hard to get. You know, I never recommend a student puts any, their hand in a block of a load of plaster because it'll just be very hard to get it out. Um, but if you're applying it to skin, um, it won't generate a, a great, a, a tremendous amount of heat at all. Did you have a, another question about that? Um, I. I don't know if, if Becky's still with us, um, but if, if Becky or anyone has, has um, concerns around that and, and might want to see kind of how we've tackled those types of things, um, then uh, you're very welcome to ask for things like our risk assessment and yes. to, to show what, what um, security measures we put in place for our well, What I would say on the, on the back of, you know, for all of you working with plaster is that um, it's all to do with the quantities as well. If you're using, a, if you're regularly using plaster, then always use a dust mask. You know, for, for an instance like this, um, it's, a, it's just a very nominal amount of plaster. But if you use it day in, day out, or for an hour a day, every week, always use the dust mask anyway, just as a precaution. It, it is heavy, heavy dust, but, it, but it's always good to wear a dust mask. And always make sure, if you can, before a session, there's always kind of wash stations nearby. Um, if it gets in the, in the eyes, if a splash of plaster gets in the eye, just, it just needs washing with water. Um, but, but always, yeah, always make sure that... Um, uh, I always like to make sure also if I'm using it with students um, that there are latex gloves available so they can use or, or um, plastic gloves available if they're latex intolerant. So anything that like that, like uh, aprons as well for clothing, dust masks, don't do what I've done, tie the hair up as well. It's always a good, there's a nightmare to get out of the hair or the beard. There's, um, we've got another question. Yep. Can you cast from the inside, uh, sorry, can you cast from inside the Modrock shape? This is it. It's happening now, Tom. People are innovating. Yes, you can. You can. You can cast the inside the moderate shape. So, if you want to, to cast, so you want to make a cast of the cast, um, a cast of the form. Yeah, by all means. Um, if you're working plaster to plaster, if you want to make a cast of this, um, then uh, a good idea would be again to use some kind of barrier to stop the plaster from sticking to the plaster, because plaster would always stick to plaster. 
So make sure there's something in between. That can be anything from margarine um, to uh, clay slip, just a little bit of clay mixed with water. And if you paint that into the inside, that will provide a really good barrier and stop the plaster from sticking to the inside. If you've got enough of a volume, enough of a shape, you could pour so a solid amount of plaster in, you could pour liquid plaster in as well and cast it. But just make sure you've got a barrier, something like that will provide a, 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 some resist so that the plaster doesn't stick to itself. Heidi mentions that Vaseline works well. Vaseline's good, but Vaseline is hard to get off. Vaseline's okay, but it, it's, it always leaves a residual kind of slippiness if that's a word it's it's perfect yes that's perfect for a barrier but it's just sometimes getting off it's why we don't necessarily recommend using vaseline for skin for casting as well or anything like that because it's just a, it's always a bit difficult to get off um but it, you you can get it off with a um a kind of gritty hand wash like this kind of high industrial washes but um yeah vaseline's all right anything that's a barrier slip is great though so i, I would always recommend best the best thing to use is slip so um Little lump of little lump of clay, stick it in a bowl with more warm, warm water, mix it up into a mush, uh, nice kind of milkshakey kind of thickness, and then paint it on. Great. Yeah. Any other any other thoughts? Uh, any other questions from anyone? You can see them, Tom. I can, oh, I, can, I suppose I could look on the chat, can't I? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course I can. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, we can do risk assessments. Story of a child, her hand having a hand. Story of a child losing her hand, having put it in a bucket of plaster. Well, 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 all right, yes, yeah, so there we go. D don't stick anything in a bucket of plaster. Um, feet, hands, not a good idea. Um, if you want to um, make a cast of a body part, use mod rock, and then take a cast of the mod rock, but, but don't, don't stick anything in volumes of plaster. Um, no. <laughs> No, that's terrible actually that's uh that's hard. that's horrific um will there be a video for the second session yes there will won't there tom yes there will. um did you say the plaster we used today was just regular plaster Paris, yes it is it's dental plaster casting plaster we get it we get bags 25 kilo bags from uh the local plastering sort of drywall center um you can order it, you can buy bags of plaster from a number of companies in the in the country. Espo do bags of plaster, but it's not that big. Um, you can buy them sometimes from Travis Perkins, the builders. Um, there's a company called Tiranthes in London um, who, who deliver it. Um, but yeah, it's just regular plaster of Paris. Yeah. I think, uh, just to be super specific, we, we ordered this batch from um, Specialist Crafts Limited. Right. And it was, yeah, fi fine casting plaster and they did it in a, a 10 kilogram bucket. Yes, and, and if you want quantities of it, then then yeah, you, I mean that's they, they come in a kind of nice plastic container, don't they, Tom? Um, yeah. We sort of work on industrial. We have industrial quantities at newer, so we kind of use tons of the stuff. Um, I had an A-level student who made a cast from sellotape and mannequins head, and then made a plaster cast. It was fantastic, like a head made from a giant cardboard egg. Yeah, that would be good. Great. So the sellotape became the kind of the the version of instead of cling film, sellotape's good. Um, great. I've used alginate to cast body parts even better. Alginate's brilliant, picks up everything, um, picks up hair follicles, it's amazing stuff. Um, can we have an illuminated end please, Tom? Come on, Tom, get the illuminated end. I don't know what I could do about that. We've been talking about making sculptures out of, uh, out of this type of thing. Um, so um, yeah, well, maybe, maybe in future we could do this as some sort of project to make some neon light sculptures. <laughs> Bear that in mind. Yes, very good. What a good idea, a neon workshop. Um, so where's that from? Ruth Stanley says that- Oh, Specialist Crafts Limited. Um, um, you know, it might be good to have a kind of, maybe we, we kind of publish the, um, where you get it all the, you know, the, the stockers from across the country where we get stuff from, because um, wherever know. people are, it might be useful. Um, yeah, thanks Catherine, that's very kind of you. Um, yeah. Once you cut the mod rock off, how do you re reseal in order to pull the plaster? Yes, okay, um, Michelle, if you're, not, if you're there or you're not there, once you cut the mod rock off and put it back together again, if you can seal it, seal it back together again with another piece of, I should have said that really a bit more clearly, if you've got a spare piece of mod rock, just sort of make a kind of tab and reassemble it. Um, if you haven't got enough mod rock, just wrap that sort of central seam with um, tape of some sort would, would be fine. Um, but mod rock would be great if you can reassemble it. Um, yeah, okay. Great. Wow, this is exciting. Totally promoted sculpture to me. Keely Darby. Great, that's what I like like to hear. <laughs> uh, promoting sculpture. That's what we're about. Okay. 
Espo. How does it always seem to use Espo? Yeah, Espo's are okay. Espo's all right. It's just Espo kind of sell kind of nominal quantity. They, Espo's all right. I mean, they're fine. They're fine. And they, they sell bags and stuff, don't they? Bags of plaster. They sell pipe cleaners, cling film. They sell everything here, don't they, that we've used today? All right. <laughs> Ruby, thank you for that's very thank you for your kind words. I hope that was paced okay. I was very conscious of gabbling on too much, rushing too quickly, and not getting it all done. But hopefully that's been instructive. Um, yeah, it's, it is amazing what you can do in an hour. Um, but that's 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 the brilliant thing about making sculpture. You can make such a lot of things, very contingent things, in a very short space of time with minimal means. And you know we're working on a tabletop as well, which is great. We don't need a great amount of space. Um, yeah okay I've never done chat room this is kind of this is sculpture chat room isn't it this is totally sculpture chat room yeah good thank you Camilla yeah <laughs> cheers Rebecca um so Tom we will we'll kind of um hopefully we'll we'll get a lot of people sending in their amazing pictures of exciting sculptural objects yeah lodged in interesting places that would be great it would be lovely to introduce the next workshop with with what's been produced in this workshop yeah, be really good be a great way of going so we're, i think we're, i think there could be some really really interesting um possibilities for the the, the most kind of um the most uh, uh absurd or uh, outlandish location for a, a mystery sculpture sort of lodged on top of a car or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> we've had some great ones already come through to the nua instagram okay. so from, Good. I think Genevieve is in the running for the top oh, prize. Oh, I okay. so, okay, it's good. setting the standard quite high there, so I'm looking forward to the exciting locations. I'm really also intrigued by the kind of, I'd love to see when they're stripped out of their plastic bags, put back onto the object that formed them. I'd love to see that too. That'd be really interesting to see the kind of relationship and, and how they picked up the surface. Um, Ruby, Desmond, have you got a website with your own work? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do actually. Um, but if you promote my work to your students, it might scare them off. Um, so, uh, but by all means, have a look. Uh, um, yes, I do have a website. But your Instagram is very accessible and interesting, and you're yeah. tagged in our last um, Instagram post. So, if anybody did want to have a look at your work, you can have a look through. Thank there. you. Yes, I would definitely. I would err towards Instagram because it's my kind of living sort of workspace, really. So, I, I would you yeah, have a look there if you want to. Um, I've just been posting some older works of mine from when I was a student, but I'm, I'm starting a new phase of sculpture. Um, can't wait to unwrap my plaster cast fossils. That's a really nice idea, the idea of the fossil roof, the idea of the fossil, the fossil, the sculpture is a kind of fossil, and, and that's absolutely right. You know, the, the impress, the impress of the sculpture becomes a fossil, doesn't it? You, you imp on a mammoth tooth. So you've kind of formed a, you've formed over a mammoth, yeah, that's great. But s c casting is like fossilization, isn't it? You're fixing something, you're setting something and imprinting it on, on another material. And that's a really lovely way of thinking about it. And that would be a really nice way to work with students. You know, imagine sort of having shown them some real examples of fossils and, and that what they're doing is, is not a million miles away from that process, just not in deep time. That's all. But I, I love that, that, that thinking, uh, sculpture thinking around fossilization. The pipe cleaner sculpture, what sculpture process would you say this is? Casting. Well, I would say, I would say that's, that's a kind of, I'd say that's a, firstly, I would say that's a set, an assemblage. I think that's an assemblage, a construction or an assemblage. Um, who, who said that? The um, Helen. Yeah, I'd say that's more of an assemblage because rather than filling a void, which casting is, you kind of ensconced it in plaster, you sort of dipped it. So, so I'm going to push that out and suggest that's an assemblage. Um, you've, you've formed the wire object, so that's, an, that's a construction and a, and a sort of a phase of modelling, and dipping it becomes a yeah, I'm going to say assemblage. Um, I'll think about that, but I think that's what I'm going to, I'm going to go with that. Um, I hope that answers that, Helen. Um, yeah, thanks, Rosemary. Going to do some stuff in mind and post some pictures. Go on, Ro, do it. Let's see them. Um, okay, yeah. Do we need to sign up for the next session? So they don't need to, do they, Tom or Liv? Um, as far as I'm aware, and I believe this to be true, they, everyone's been automatically, I need to, to look at Liv while I do this, automatically signed up for the second session. Um, if, you, uh, if you keep an eye on your emails, you'll be able to see um, the updates on that. If for any reason you haven't received an email though, or you haven't had a confirmation, do let us know and we can look at that.
Yeah. What do you reckon, Tom? An assemblage or? I was, I'm maybe an assemblage. I was thinking it reminds me a lot of um, what's done industrially when when they build bridges and things. Um, w when you um, have those steel girders um, that are kind of support mechanisms for when when you do casting over the top of that uh, for when you're creating big concrete. Yeah. Assemblages. <laughs> well, casting casting by definition, you you need you have a former to make the cast. So because this doesn't have a former. Um, because, or rather because it's not in, encased in something to create the form. I'm wondering, or is it, maybe, maybe, maybe we've invented a new sculpt, maybe it's a new, maybe like a dipped, a dipped sculpture, dipping, D dip, dippage, I don't know. But anyway, let me think of my bigger one. I did that earlier, but um, yeah, um, and it's, I know what you mean, when, you, when, uh, when architects sort of build, they put the, re the rebar in and then form it with, with cement. Um, yeah. And also these could be painted or sprayed. That could be sprayed another colour to make it look metallic. Okay. If um, anyone has got any other questions, do put them in the chat and we can get those answered. Otherwise, I think we'll start wrapping up for today. Um, but do also send us those photos. We're very excited about them. Helen Dip, we'll go with Dippage, Helen, for the time being. I think I could think of anything a bit more art art artistic. Um, <laughs> Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you, Des. Cheers, Tom. Um, thank you. Thanks, Liv. And thanks, Sam, if you're there as well. And thanks, everybody. <gasps> Gosh, Sarah, thank you. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, don't put any plaster down. Good point. Should have said that. Yeah. Don't flush plaster away. Put it in the bin. So I think that that looks like it. That's it for the questions. So I think we'll kind of leave it here. But thank you, everyone. Um, we can't wait to see your outcomes. Oh. One one last question. Does it wash out of clothes if it splashes on it? Yes, but don't don't wash it out while it's wet. Let it dry and let it dry, and then it should peel off or fall off, and then then wipe the residue. But if you wipe it when it's wet, it'll just kind of ingrain itself in your clothing. Um, don't wear don't wear woolly jumpers either when you're working with plaster. That's uh, an, another thing that I've learned the hard way. Okay, Liv, that's great. So um, I think we'll leave it there. Okay, we right. will be sharing the recording in due course, and hopefully see anyone who's still there at the next session. So thanks for all. All right. Great.